Hi friends and fellow Earth Angels, it's Gladys and welcome back to another one of my weekly Sunday card readings. And this spread will start by covering November 15th to the 21st or whenever you got it to watch as I always intend these to be timeless readings. I mean you can come back to my channel at any time and scroll through the videos to receive guidance, support, wisdom, and divine insight. So welcome, friends. Oh, so we are just entering the phase of the new moon in Scorpio. Scorpio has a tendency, it's a water sign, and it has a tendency to bring up passion, igniting energy within us. <laughs> now that can be channeled through rage or anger, or it can be channeled through creativity and pleasure and passion. Uh, so I chose an eclectic group of cards this week to access that energy to support you this week. Remember, everything in life is about choice and how we choose to look at it, view it. One of the big parts of my job is to support clients with perspective. You know, I have, through my divine gifts, a bird's eye view so I can offer clients different angles, different perspectives so that they can make and feel confident about the decisions they're making or the experiences they're having going forward. And remember, on the spiritual journey, as you open up to the ego, right? The ego isn't necessarily bad. Uh, you know, I've mentioned this on many videos. It is really a place where we can explore the wounds, right? The things that squeeze us, that we need to work on. And um, there's a lot of fear in that space. And if you can look at it from a different angle or a courageous approach with prayer and working with the Holy Spirit and the divine and asking them to show you truth and to support you in, in understanding these feelings, these emotions that come up that could be labeled good, bad, right, wrong, positive, or negative. You know, I say so often, you know, I don't necessarily like to buy into that. I always see it as an opportunity to learn and grow through pain and pleasure and everything in between. So I chose to work with the goddess energy this week. So we just opened the 11 or the, we just entered the 1111 portal on um, and then on top of it Mars went direct right that very masculine planet where so many of you have been feeling held back uh, we're now going to propel forward and my question to you is what happens when you finally get everything you want question mark that opens up a whole new uh, bag of experiences. So as we slingshot forward and things start to work themselves out and things start to come into alignment, our pathway forward is how do we open up to understand those wounds, you know, the ego, the shadow, so that we can learn to love on deeper levels. So with the Friday the 13th energy, it's like, again, a, 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 a powerful gateway to tap into the divine feminine energy, the gift of insight, intuition, magnetism, uh, really being able to manifest. So I pray that the goddesses will be able to give you assistance this week on where you're at and where you're going moving forward after this mass shift of energy that we've just experienced this weekend or this week the this past week so i'm going to open up space i am going to invite in all your guardian angels and guides the archangels the ascended masters the divine mother and father and all their holy beings of light who would like to assist with this guidance for you this week and i'm going to ask that the messages that are channeled through be for your best and highest good and the best and highest good of all concerned. 
Ah, I keep seeing the word balance. So let me connect my heart to the go- heart of the goddess, the divine feminine, the divine mother, the great mother. Whatever word resonates with you for that blessing of feminine energy. I keep seeing the word balance. Balance. It might be a big theme this week. So, um... Okay, let me start with the goddesses first. <laughs> I have a couple avenues I can take. So I was undecided when I hit record. So I might pause for a second to check in to see what pathway I want to take with the cards that I have. All right, that's me practicing being in flow and not necessarily sticking rigidly to a plan. So goddesses, what's the most important guidance, goddess that wants to come forward this week? What's the most important message we need to hear, see, feel, and know? From the goddesses, the divine feminine energy. And we have, yes, Irene, peace. It says there's no need to worry as everything is working out beautifully. So here's the thing this week, friends. We have, uh, we have an opportunity to make choices on the experiences we're having. Remember, the more you want, The more you grow on the spiritual journey, the more things need to shift and change. So here's the thing. This year, my word was surrender. And um, what I learned throughout the year that the word patience for me was directly connected to surrender. And so about mid-year, end of summer, I started asking Mother, uh, Mother Nature to show me Uh, patience and exploring the seasons and patience through the season that I'm in and you know the impatience of of embracing the space that I'm in and all the things that I do want and what I want to experience so what would happen is I was challenged with impatience impatience with people uh, experiences hang-ups on projects things didn't work out and I was constantly reminded this is the pathway to understand patience so you have to have the experiences the tension being squeezed in order to understand what you're setting the intention to so maybe it's forgiveness maybe it's compassion maybe it's understanding the wounds of the the ego right the limitations the fear well guess what those things need to come up for you to experience how to move through them in a different way right this is why um this is why when people you know would come to me for energy work or they'd come to me for a a reading what would happen is their lives would start to change and then they would get scared and freak out like oh my gosh this is happening and this is changing and this is and then would freeze and then disappear which is a very common thing with people who are growing spiritual and this is why I always pray and I just always hold a container for people on their journey because remember this spiritual journey that we're on is an ongoing lifelong love affair and we get to do it over and over and over again so if we can see things based on experience instead of like an end result like I've got to do something to get something when we can see every single day as an experience to evolve it brings more peace and it brings more love knowing that our time is infinite as opposed to living on timelines and deadlines and goals and agendas and uh, like limitations and expectations so I feel like this year has really like squeezed people in that experience so we're moving into the energy of peace the reason why I'm glad I waited is because the card for the new moon in Scorpio which is what is happening now as you watch this if you're watching it as I've you know posted it uh it says work through your fears right so it's no coincidence that we're moving into this energy and Irene shows up with peace right for peace this week maybe reflecting upon when we were when we are embody when we are embodying 
the energy of love. When we are experiencing the energy of love, there's gratitude. And it's interesting because I'm, I'm drawn to the child here, the innocence of the child, the laughter, and the abundance of food that she's carrying. Um, and I notice the dolphin energy back here. A dolphin energy is very intuitive. They're very family-oriented. They're, they're wise and they're very sacred uh, creatures, beings on our planet. And so, and if you look, her, her face, um, her face is a little guarded, right? And suspect. So even though she has all the gifts of abundance and innocence and intuition around her, there's still this guardedness with her, right? And we could be experiencing that. That's why, you know, my question is like, what well, what happens? What happens when you get everything you want? Oh, here comes the sirens. Here comes Michael with the fear, right? Obviously guardian of the light, call Michael in. So what happens is we could start looking for things to create drama and tension <laughs> and disruption. So this week, Things that may challenge your peace, right? Activating your fears may come up this week. And so this is an opportunity to, instead of feeling like you've got to react or take an action, how can you feel out the fears, right? How can you call on the Holy Spirit or call on the divine and ask them to show you truth of the situation, right? I, I fear I've learned to... I've learned how to revitalize my energy when fear arises. Um, I'm very hyper aware, self aware of my feelings 99% of the time. So I'm constantly working with the divine to explore that. And so when fears come up, I notice it as just there's parts of me, inner child, the divine feminine, the divine masculine, the wise one, the, the crone, the adolescent, uh, the young, young adult. There's these, some part of me is resistant to us moving forward. And when I can feel the fear, I'm like, okay, what part of me is resistant to this? Is Where is the perception of protection coming, right? Because fear is the ego's way to protect because there's a wound, right? There's something that's scary to look at or experience. And so when you can pause in the stillness, when you can pause in the feeling, there's so much wisdom in it. Uh, I woke up in the middle of the night and I had this fire pain in my back and I just had this situation on my mind and I'm like, man, for a full hour, I just sat with it. Uh, I tossed and turned and I could feel the fire in my back. And you know what it felt like, friends? It felt like growing pains. It felt like I was working through something and my body was letting go and releasing and all I could do is surrender to it and pray for the wisdom and the guidance. And eventually I ended up falling asleep and I woke up with some different clarity. And I was like, ah, that's the pathway to healing. Give it permission. Give it permission to move through your bodies. This is the new way to find inner peace. It's the new way to, to heal, heal yourself, right? So remember, you're not... You're not missing anything. You're not missing out on anything with regards to the external. There's no person. There's no experience. There's no material thing. There's nothing that you can achieve outside of you that will satiate you more than the wholeness and the embodiment uh, and balance of the masculine and feminine and your relationship with the divine and creator. So it doesn't matter. There, no relationship, no child, no um, job, no uh, living arrangements, no amount of food will satiate that hunger to feel whole and complete and deep levels of love. 
right? When we're looking externally for those things, it will come in, but we're attracting those things from a lack of love. So there's expectations that those things will provide something that we're missing. And then what happens is over and over and over again, we're disappointed, right? Hence disrupts the the, the peace within. So this whole year, all these readings have been about how to heal, how to listen, how to create, how to connect, how to... Uh, Uh, call in the divine on a regular basis for support. It's been talking about all the different guides that can assist you. Um, And we're moving into this place of wholeness and balance. So in order for us to really feel that, we have to be aware of what is where the wounds are, right? So I see this duality coming this week and probably through the end of the year. And what it's doing is it's not, you know, God's not punishing you or it's not here to like make your life uh, difficult and you can't catch a break and all those things when you can just look at it from a different angle. Hmm, interesting. Where is this coming from? I do want to mention this too. Be very mindful of what you're watching what you're experiencing from the external world, whether it be from the news, whether it be from the social media, whether it from TV programs, there's a, a, a mass, there's a mass pull from the 3D world to influence people. And the spiritual community, the, the, the earth angels who are really, really downloading massive levels of, of light, we've really had to anchor and ground in our identity and individuality, which we live in a a society that thrives on group mentality. I mean, you can see it on social media is, you know, um, people, they, they promote their pages the same, they, they look the same, they're sharing the same information over and over again. And I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but when you're working towards spiritual growth and individualism, uh, you're more susceptible to influence. You're more susceptible to wanting to fit in and wanting to be accepted, right? Socially accepted. So, so the challenge with this is then you're always connected to the machine, right? So I'm using social social media, for example, but, and again, it's, it's not a bad thing because it, it can be really beneficial in a lot of ways and everything is a pathway to something else. So the challenge is, is being mindful of how you may be unconsciously influenced, right? Um, I know immediately when I need to take a break from a TV show, even if it's the sweetest, most romantic, cutest TV show, I can feel when, I, when I'm starting to come outside of myself or in that dreamy space um, and I need to take a pause and kind of pull back and I'm like, oh, I can see where the influence is coming in. Oh, I can see where these worries and fears are coming up. Let me pull space and ground myself. So be mindful how you're plugged into the machine this week. How you're, you know, even when you're, away from, like let's say you're not on social media or you're not plugged in, be mindful how you're thinking about it, you know, posts and be mindful how you're um, utilizing your time. Um, I don't really want to get too much into it, but it's coming up um, because I think we're going to have earth angels and and, and, and people who are spiritually going are going to have more of a pull of uh, being uh, influenced uh, from the 3D world. And now we're here to learn about it, to experience it, to grow from it. But when you start to feel yourself becoming a slave to it, or when you start to feel yourself uh, like feeling responsible or pulled into it, right? It's kind of like when, you know, people feel like they have to have a certain image. So they they buy a particular house and a particular car and particular clothes and uh, it's living way outside their means. So, so then what happens is they become a slave to the machine, right? The job and paying the bills. So spiritual entrepreneurs have now figured out that they're disconnecting and simplifying their lives. They're moving more towards work that inspires them that speaks to their soul purpose, right? And and that could be you just being a caregiver or wanting to help somebody. That could be you being a really good listener to start with. That could be you praying and reading books. There's so many 
avenues to 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 pull you into purpose and so there's this push and pull that I'm feeling from like the 3D 5D and you know the planet that we're living on and the divine realm Um, everything is joy joyful in moderation so I feel like that message may have been obviously it's a general read so that message right there may have been for I don't know if it was one person. Just be mindful how you're feeling pulled outside of yourself, right? How you're you're being pulled up and out and just call your energy back within yourself. Call in the Holy Spirit or call in God and ask them to, uh, that guidance to, to show you truth, what you need to know. Now, you have to be open to want to hear it because sometimes, sometimes it's not what we want to hear or see or experience because it will require a level of change, right? So hence why it's easier to just kind of numb out into things right but if you find you're tipping over the edge with it if you find like you're becoming anxious because of it that is a red flag time out uh, to separate and focusing on gratitude focus on the blessings of what you have Um, anyway so let me see where do I want to go next so, all right, so I want to I wanna get a message for you, a message of guidance for you for this full moon. So, I mean, for this new moon, we have new moon in Scorpio. And so now I'm just going to get, uh, I'm going to ask the goddesses for an additional message from the new moon in Scorpio. So this will be more about the, the words that come out. What additional message, Irene, do you have for the collective? What more do they need to know? around here okay there we go <laughs> All right, let's see here. wow don't let your past hold you back interesting I believe the south node right now is in Sagittarius I think it's like Gemini Sag um, and the sun is about to go into Sag in a week or so so Sagittarius is a fire energy hence we were talking about like Scorpio and passion and then we go into a fire energy Sagittarius energy is the archer the adventurer they need to be stimulated by the mind right um, they're they're curious and they like to experience all facets of life so don't let your past hold you back so here's something that I found interesting I was having a conversation with a client and we were talking about carrying energy in the body and she mentioned that the hamstrings the hamstrings uh, I mean can be like when your lower back is tight and it kind of pulls on the hamstrings but the emotional energy tied to hamstrings is Uh, the inability to let go of the past or being in the past. So if pain is coming up in your body, this would be a really great week to explore it. You may be holding unforgiveness in your middle back. That's where we carry the energy in our liver, our gallbladder, our spleen, our middle back. Uh, Unforgiveness is connected to that. Uh, Dwelling on situations, anxiety in a lot of ways is unmet needs. Your shoulders are connected to your shoulds. I should have done this. I should have done that. So you're being asked to really feel this week. And as you feel all facets of maybe it's pain, maybe it's maybe it's joy, you'll understand yourself on better uh, on on a on a on a different level. So don't let your past hold you back. This week, you may be triggered. You may be activated. You might be have difficulties or frustrations come in. And remember, it's, you know these readings aren't necessarily an omen or a premonition. It really is just spiritual support. And so this shouldn't be viewed as, oh God, you know, it's going to hit the fan. And oh, because, you know, the reminder should be, I can handle anything that comes my way with God. God is moving me through this to make my life better, whole, and complete. And so I'm learning how to access higher levels of love or experience experience different dimensions of love. Maybe it's compassion. Maybe it's forgiveness. Maybe it's letting go. Maybe it is 
acceptance maybe it is spiritual pride there's all these things we're experiencing through difficulties so again you might have a person that might pop back up in your life and it might bring up a bunch of stuff right it's connected to that fiery sag energy so uh be curious this week and you know let god be a go-to as opposed to a last resort Meaning like it's the last thing you go to and you've tried everything else and you're completely drained and wiped and tired. So let me see here. I'm going to ask what, so these are, um, oh, you know what? I didn't even, I didn't even show you the cards. (laughs) I just jumped into the messages. Anyway, the cards I'm using are in the description box below. So these are Queen of the Moon cards, the Queen of the Moon Oracle. So I'm going to ask. Irene, the goddess energy, what is going to be gifted to you this week as we enter into the Scorpio new moon? Let's see, what what is going to be gifted to you this week? Wow, protection. So this card comes up a lot when I use this deck. So it is the number 24, two plus four equals six. Six is six is an energy of creativity. It's an energy of family, home, uh, uh, like safety, uh, obviously protection. And so this week, you may feel raw, exposed, fears coming up. And again, if you can look at the fears as an opportunity to learn, it's the ego's way of showing you where the wounds are. And when you can be masterful with it, when you can explore it from like, hmm, I'm curious about this, or hmm, where does this come from? Uh, You will feel protected within yourself, right? Uh, We can't necessarily experience back to the world to provide protection for us right because you know most people are out for their own personal gain i mean that's just hum- humanity in a lot of ways i mean don't get me wrong humanity is amazing and beautiful and god the things i've seen this year and the people i've worked with and the heart love that i've experienced has been incredible but we can't forget that there's also the shadow, the fears, the, 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 the wounds that come up to be spilled all over. So you may be feeling vulnerable this week. You may be feeling raw or exposed, which is just symbolism that you're transforming, that you're evolving and growing. So call on the Archangel Michael. Um, maybe this week is a week for you to burrow away and maybe you've got a comfy, cozy bed that you can cuddle up in it, you know I keep feeling going back to gratitude right when these things come up if you can sh- or negativity comes up or getting fired up about another person or an experience or something that's happening and we're feeling out of control how can you bring it back to what you do have the blessings that are around you sometimes that's really hard friends and I just ask God like man this situation is really hard for me to <laughs> find like a spiritual viewpoint on this is really really hard for me to to love right now god can you show me uh love in this can you show me another angle can you show me another perspective and usually i just soften and open and another perspective comes up it's usually about my own stuff (laughs) i usually get annoyed like oh there that thought is again or oh this about me is something that I'm working on and here it is again and so you know having those go-to things to support you to shift the energy not like to pack it down not to stuff it or pretend it's not happening but it's giving you better practice to protect yourself with creator with the divine so recently I started using affirmations for self-esteem confidence worth and value so I'm pursuing some stuff in my personal life that's activating my insecurities and activating my my wounds of of needing to be accepted or or liked and so uh it's been like kind of challenging uh, like working within myself so i started listening to these affirmations at night and it has made a dramatic shift in my attitude in my energy so if you're 
if you're feeling like you're stuck in that place of negativity, like you're, and that's just the viewpoint of all the bad that's going on or nothing seems to be going your way. And, you know, friends, if you're experiencing that, it's it's normal. You're not alone. It's the human experience. But once you notice it, you can work t- towards shifting that, right? I think it's unrealistic to say somebody can be positive and cheery and uplifting all the time, right? And that's why I, I sh- I'm a storyteller and I share my shadow stuff. So So it can be very easy for people to idolize, right? Or put me on a pedestal because you get like a piece of what I'm offering, whether it's through podcasts, whether it's through posts on social media or these YouTube channels, right? But you have to remember, I'm also channeling this information from a high source, but I am as human as human can be, right? So if you find yourself slipping into the negativity, and this might be connected to uh, the machine and you guys getting plugged into, I don't know, negativity, news, social media, whatever's out there, right? If, If it's a separate and divide mentality, it's not going to nourish your soul. So that could be like an indicator. Is this separate and divide, pitting one against the other? Hmm, okay, let me pull back here and let me just call on assistance from the divine for a different angle. How can I look at this and 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 and, and work on tolerance and work on acceptance and work on love and work on compassion, right? Um, and that's why those things are coming up. So I am gonna put that that uh, video that I use at night um, in the link below. If you're challenged with, like I said, negativity or um, you're having a hard time kind of getting out of that hole and actually feeling good and feeling peaceful, I notice it's it's a woman who speaks and I'm working a lot with the Divine Mother and the Sacred Mother uh, in my own spiritual journey. So just her feminine voice is so soothing and so comforting and so maternal. So this doesn't mean that you have to figure these things out on your own, that you have to work through your fears and let go of the past on your own. There are so many things out there. I pray that these cards are, or these readings are an offering of support for you to know, so that you know that you're not alone. And there's so much out there and you'll just naturally be guided. So uh, I'm going to put that in the description box below if you're being challenged with negativity this week. All right, so let me see here. I'm going to ask, I'm going to connect with your soul self. What message? Okay, so this is all going on. You're protected through your fears. You're letting go, releasing. You're moving more towards inner peace. What does your soul want you to know is happening? What does your soul want you to know? What's the point of all this? That's a good question. What's the point of all this? This will be interesting. (laughs) Be positive, (laughs) friends, I swear. Oh, I love when they back me up. It is the coolest thing. It's just the best experience. It says, your thoughts can shape your experience, so be sure to focus on the positive. So I will for sure put that link below. This is like the stamp of approval. You'll need to work towards deprogramming, especially with everything that's going on here in the United States and the world with the uh, pandemic and uh, the election here in the United States. You know, now that we're kind of coming down from that energy and these mass shifts of astrology, I mean, it's not over yet. I mean, we still got a month and a half left of 2020. So this is this is a really good time to start practicing this. Even when things around you seem to be falling apart, even when you can't make sense of and there's fears and worries that are coming up, your thoughts can shape your experience. So be sure to focus on the positive. Again, this doesn't mean like pretend challenging, difficult things aren't happening. It's just seeing it, experiencing it in your body, the worry, the fear, the doubts, and then asking the divine to to guide you through it, to show you another way, guide you through support. So one of my missions with my social media and my YouTube channel is to be a curator of positivity. So how social media works is when you click on something, it automatically generates 
a billion other things that your friends have posted that go in alignment with that. So let's say you click on somebody's cute kitty and you, and you love the picture of their kitty and even made a comment on it. What will happen is that your entire feed will start being, you're now curating your feed for animals and kitties. And and then you might get something from the ASPCA or you might get something from, from animals that are in trouble and you may or may not like that. And so uh, it starts to curate what you're seeing. So I've always been very, very proactive in my own likes and clicks to be a curator of what I want to experience, right? So I see so many of your family photos, your your babies, your, your businesses that you're growing. I want to be part of that experience. I want to be part of sending energy to you really living your life and enjoying it. So everything I post, I'm mindful that it be a curator for good. So when you click like on my Heavenly Hugs page or on my Instagram page, know that you're curating or taking part in what you're going to see, what you're going to experience um, in your world, right? whether it be social media and so on and so forth you're creating an emotion to that energy so when you can be mindful about it even when you click like on this youtube channel the likes are part part of contributing to what you're going to start experiencing in your feed in your youtube feed that's why i say if if you like this video click like because it will continue to show up if not i'll disappear <laughs> and if you're not interested in what i have to say that's cool you know but if you really like it and it's really helpful you know be proactive in that you know and i certainly do that for myself with the people i follow and then over time i'll unsubscribe to some things and i'll subscribe to other things so so know that you can be proactive this week and you're creating a, a protection for yourself, a, a vibration and an energy that will radiate out to the world um, and you'll start to be love on this planet. You're, you'll be the embodiment and the refre reflection of light and then you'll attract soul groups and you'll attract partnerships and, and lovers and uh, fam new, new forms of soul families, right? And this is how we explode with embracing and, 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 and embarking on this love journey that we're on till about 2025. All right, so let's see. So these are, these are brand new cards. And it is the secret language of light, trans, trans, transmissions from your soul. I've done some readings with my, for myself on, with these and man, they are profound. So I'm going to introduce them this week. Uh, it's a deck that I found. I don't know. I was probably watching a reader or scrolling through Amazon uh, cards just to see what's out there. Unfortunately, there's so many cards that are out of print now. So I try to stay up on top of things that really resonate with me. So I'm going to ask the divine feminine energy overall. Hmm. Let me see. What's going to be my intention? What energy? That's it. What energy is being downloaded this week as we go forward into the new world, the new earth, the awakening, the great awakening? What's being downloaded? What do you need to know? Or what can be downloaded? Could, this could be something that could be downloaded if you ask. Um... Or it could be something that is already being downloaded. Let's see here. Alignment. Yes. I mean, friends, these cards are gorgeous. I am planning a pick a card with them. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, so it's card number five. It just changed. And remember I started off at the beginning of this reading saying, I see balance. Um, and it's how we align to energies. Uh, so I'm getting uh, guidance to share that a chakra balancing meditation might be beneficial for you this week to align your chakras. Um, I, I've been talking a lot about what we focus on, uh, understanding the ego, understanding the, the spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit aspect that guides us. Uh, we're kind of moving back to a planetary 
alignment. Things have been out of alignment for a long time. And and that's a beautiful space to be in because it reveals where the work needs to be. Being out of alignment reveals uh, where to focus energy and where we need to grow next. You have to remember, friends, everything is a season. I know here in New England, there are so many people I know that are already, you know, it's very cold here now. People are putting their heat on and people are getting those winter blues already. And it's almost like you have to remember The winter is a season and it doesn't stop at winter. I think so many people can fall into that trap of getting stuck at winter and get depressed, right? But if you can really take it just one step forward and remember, spring always comes. There's always a rebirth after the dormancy, right? So after the hibernation, there is always, always a rebirth. I mean, when in your life has spring never sprung, right? Spring always comes. So if you can just remember that, you know, after the winter, if you're getting into this so final and you're getting stuck in that space, remember that spring is right behind it. And and the space that you're in is only temporary. So maybe you're feeling alone. Maybe you're feeling cold. Maybe you're feeling fearful. When you can align to the higher wisdom, when you can align to the divine, universal, unconditional love energy, it's a reminder that the space that you're in is only temporary. It's only a season and 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 because of that you can then give yourself permission to learn everything you need to learn in that season in that space that you're in so uh let's see here and this this requires a level of change uh it requires attention right um and i think it goes back to pain right and where you're experiencing pain in your body and what emotion is connected to it or what past trauma or what fears are connected to it and how can you look at it and self-soothe self-nurture uh support you know seek out assistance from people loving people around you uh that can that can um assist you in coming back into balance let me see here i just want to check hold on hold on i want to see what else is in here um so the card here says your soul is your biggest fan it knows the truth of you and loves you unconditionally it is continuously streaming this information to you To tune in, your mind, body, and spirit must all agree in the now. Do this by meditating, focusing on your soul name, enjoying something you love, or having a nap. It is not up to your soul to zap you into alignment. Its job is to maintain your soul station so that you have a frequency to tune into. Interesting. When you are out of alignment, you will automatically ask questions and you want to create something different. Through this process, you gain clarity about your passions. Being out of alignment can feel awful. (laughs) It is easy to blame a person or situation when we feel bad, but instead of asking why something is happening, take a breath, return to neutral, and ask what you can create from the situation. I mean, this is basically the whole reading that we talked about. Um, And remember, your soul is a consistent loving home you can return to always. So this is a call back to uh, your your self. Uh, And this is all about self-love, self-healing on deeper, deeper, deeper levels. And remember, in order to see where you're out of alignment, experiences have to happen or experiences will come up to challenge you in that. So love yourself fiercely, my friends. Love yourself. uh, Gosh, I, I can't even... Uh, process the words love yourself or be open to God showing you how to love yourself on deeper levels because really an empowered wise spiritually evolved being of light is a force that cannot be controlled it cannot be 
suppressed. It cannot be conditioned. It cannot be manipulated. And this is why we have these forces in this on this planet that are trying to suppress that so fiercely. So I feel like I want to say my ending. Trust in God. Trust in the divine. Trust your intuition, right? Um, there's a reason why I was guided to say that at the end of every single reading. And I feel like this is... This is exactly why, right? A call back to love, a call back to your own inner power. This is the great awakening on the planet and people will show up by poo-pooing it or making fun of it or belittling it. And if you can just see that's their own fears, right? That's their own like mirror of change that they're not ready (laughs) to embark on. And so you're being asked to be the inspiration. You're being asked to be the miracle on the planet. People are watching you. People are seeing the challenges that you've had and what you're going through. Share with them, support them, love them. Set your boundaries, right? Take care of yourself, recharge, regroup, laugh, play, sing and dance, have adventures, right? Um, That actually is happening more in the world than you know. So... uh, despite popular belief of this being the worst year ever, the experience I've had with myself and many clients that I've worked through this year, it's been transformative. It's been the break that a lot of people have needed. It's been a reset. So, you know, understand there's so many things happening uh, that you're unaware of. All right, I'm going to finish by closing space, thanking all your guardian angels and guides, the archangels, the ascended masters, the divine mother and father, and all their holy beings of light that assisted. I want to thank Irene for her message. Again, there is no need to worry as everything is working out beautifully. And I'm going to ask that any healing that was started today in this reading continue for as long as it needs to be done. All right, friends, so if I could be of assistance, if you need somebody to bounce some stuff off of, that's that's the work that I do. That's a divine guidance session. Um, I do have some angel card readings, Ask an Angel, a past life regression, uh, past, not like a past life reading. Uh, and then I also have a reading on 2020 soul growth. So if you're stuck in this area um, or you've had experiences that you're like, I just can't see or understand it or process it, I have a card reading that. Uh, can help and assist with that and that's all down below as well as information about my subscription program and the online classes that I'm offering in that group Um, I love you God loves you so much thank you for being present thank you for being here thank you for watching trust your intuition and I'll send you love with heavenly hugs bye for now